we're going to be ranking every strong archetype in regulation f this idea was originally from scooty easy who made a video on his own channel so i highly recommend checking that out he's been pumping out content every single day almost so yeah i think he's been putting out pretty informative stuff so definitely please check him out he is the one that actually came up with this tier list and the idea for the video i think it's just so so cool and i feel like everyone should actually you know at least all the content creators should make a video doing this because there's just so much discussion like i feel like this is more interesting than just ranking every single pokemon like this is this is like the real deal so the first archetype we're gonna rank is moon balance and why are we ranking moon balance first because this is the team that i actually brought into the metagame so if i'm being honest at this point in the metagame the way the moon balance team is built i would probably put it into i'm actually going to change this tier to b plus so I'm going to change this here to B plus and I'm going to put moon balance in B plus. It's not S, it's not A. The reason is, is that a lot of these teams are running icy wind fluttermane with speed boost into taunt and it's just too hard for the moon team to handle. But moon just runs so many good Pokemon in general that I think in the hands of a good player who knows what they're doing, they can definitely get a result with it. I think B plus is really fair for it. I don't think it's S or A at the moment. When at the time that I used it at the regional, it was probably S, but yeah, I think it's definitely fallen off a bit. Then there's 222 Dozo. There is a lot of counterplay to 222 Dozo because one of the most common Urshifu forms is Urshifu Dark, and it just completely destroys Don Dozo. Now, I actually think Terra Fairy Don Dozo is the better one, and depending on when you see this video, there is actually a Terra Fairy Don Dozo video that I am making, so, or like, it's gonna be, it's already recorded at this point, but yeah, you guys will see it at some point. Maybe, maybe, maybe you've already seen it, maybe you've not, I actually don't know when I'm uploading it, but yeah, either way, um, I, Terra Fairy Don Dozo is not that common even though it beats our Shifu, because people need Terra Grass for Amoongus. And it means that you can't cover for both. So I think for 2-2-2 two, two, two Dozo teams, it's really hard for them to, you know, generally cover most of the metagame. And I think because of that, it's going to go into C tier. Then there's Fire, Water, Grass, Balance. And in terms of, like, Fire, Water, Grass, Balance, I think this one, uh, yeah, so th this one is more focused on the Amoongus stuff. So Amoongus, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, and Incineroar. I think these three Pokemon are solid together, but the usage of Amoongus stuff has fallen off a bit. I think though, into like into the current metagame, Rocky Helmet Amoongus is really good. It beats her Shifu Rapid Strike, which almost everyone's running with Choice Scarf. You can really just pin that position down. And I think because of that, I'm going to put it in A tier. I, I do think Firewater Grass in general, I mean, of course, the Moon Balance team uh, has Firewater Grass. I think the Roaring Moon, uh, unfortunately, is actually the one that's kind of bringing that down a little bit. So, yeah, I do think that's a bit unfortunate, but I do think Firewater Grass Amoongus is definitely a little bit underrated right now. I don't think it's S tier, but it's definitely amazing. Then there's Blood Moon or Saluna Trick Room. A lot of teams in the format right now do actually just lose to that standard Blood Moon team. Like, it's so easy to just get up Trick Room and then start spamming Hyper Voices. I do think there's ways to play around it, but I don't know how many people are actually, like, really heavily preparing their matchups into that. I think that team is really good. You know, it, you know, Incineroar usually runs, like, 116 Adamant and then starts spamming, like, really, really powerful U-turns. So I think because of that, it does actually give themselves a decently good advantage. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how to rate this. I guess it, you know, they pair with Ogre Pond Wellspring, they pair with Specs Fluttermane. They don't run Booster Speed anymore. They do run Choice. Specs Fluttermane. I know Jody's posted his rental at one. And let's see. I'm kind of, I'm not sure exactly where to put it. I'm going to put it in B+. I think a lot of teams do lose to it, but I also think a Blood Moon or Saluna plus Furigraph in general is really volatile. And because the archetype is really volatile, I think it is possible to just lose games because your opponents get, you know, good switch-ins, right? So I think because of that, and like, you know, stalling a trick room and then just winning really easily, you know, double protects. I think there's a lot of ways to beat the team in terms of like variants. And I think that's kind of what actually brings it down a little bit. So that's why I'm going to put it in B+. I would consider putting it in... I mean, okay, okay. I think the favorable matchups that you're getting out of Blood Moon is why I'm putting it in terms of Moon, whereas I think Moon is just neutral into everything with a few negative ones. Then there's um, uh, then there's um, Archaladon. So the thing about Archaladon Rain, it's usually paired with Amoongus, it's paired with Incineroar, you know, it's paired with Urshifu, you know, stuff like that. And the archetype is essentially based around using the Archaladon as this good defensive piece that could potentially go for, you know, stuff like Snarl, it swaps into Surging Strikes, it uses this plus Pollen Puff and Intimidate support to get off, you know, the Stamina Boost and then sweep with Body Press. But if you ignore it, then it's going to sweep with Electro Shot. The only issue is that the Pokemon's kind of slow. There's ways to beat Pelipper. There's ways to overwhelm Archaladon. I played this at, I actually played this at Day 2 Charlotte at 9-2, and I kind of realized that into Archaladon, you can just overwhelm it with faster pokemon 
So I ended up bringing, I think it was like um, Ogre on Wellspring, Fluttermane, Roaring Moon, Bolt. And I felt like I had enough pressure to overwhelm their whole team. So I think because of that, I think the arch archetype is solid for sure. It's just that it is kind of hard to pilot. And I do think that Archaladon is prone to getting overwhelmed. Just based on the metagame right now and based on things that can be Archaladon, I think that standard Combine Raging Bolt team is actually amazing into the Archaladon stuff. Especially since Lando I kind of counters it. And then, you know, Raging Bolt counters the Pelipper. And of course, like Pelipper compared to some of the other Pokemon in the metagame just doesn't have the stats to keep up. It has the utility and everything to keep up, which is why, you know, it's used on this team, but it is overall a lower quality Pokemon in general. So I'm going to put it in B tier. Also, Archaladon Rain has not had that many results. Like at least Blood Moon or Saluna and Roaring Moon have had its results. So whereas, so I'm actually, that's actually kind of the differentiating factor between B plus and B, at least at the moment. Then there's Dragon Steel. Oh, okay. So I'm pretty sure this is specifically geared towards the Reggie Drago Golden Ghost stuff. I'm not sure where to actually put Reggie Drago Golden Ghost stuff. Because the thing about Reggie Drago Golden Ghost, it's not had its results. Like, I mean, but also the reason it's not had its results is because it's because people aren't using that team. Like, it's not because it's not good. It's because people aren't using it. Usually, this is paired with Incinords, paired with Rillaboom, paired with Urshifu, Ogre Pond, Heart Flame. Like, you know, these kind of Pokemon, like Urshifu, Rapid Strike, by the way. And you're supposed to basically lead, you know, Torn Golden Go, get into Ogre Pond, have, um, not, yeah, and then have the redirection into Regidrago, and then Regidrago can sweep. That's kind of the whole logic behind the team, and the team is really good in general. Now, I personally am not going to rate this off of results, only because people have not been using this archetype. But the people who have been using this archetype have been having good success. My only issue is that this kind of stuff still struggles versus well-played Raging Bolt. And I think because there's double fake out and everything like that running around, I think if Raging Bolt manages to get a calm mind off, these kind of teams can struggle and need really specific counterplay. Like you do technically beat Raging Bolt with Redirection Dragon Energy, Force the Terra, and then just beat it with Make It Rain. But that's such a specific line. And because not many people are using this team, I think it I think it isn't really the best. At least at the moment. I think if more people start to use it, it can definitely go up to B plus or A. Also, one thing to note is that outside of the C tier, nothing is actually really that bad. Like, like even C is not, not a bad rating. Like, I'd say D and F are, like, really poor ratings. But this one, I know Scooty Easy said this in his video as well, but it was, like, um, he, he basically was saying along the lines of, um, like, ever all these all these cores are good because they're literally the top 20 of the format like that and his video is probably his titled top 20 mine just going to be ranking you know top team something along those lines we'll see when we figure out but yeah the next one is going to be flutter chi yu now the thing about flutter chi yu is that it's run with Raging Bolt, it's run with Ogre Pond Wellspring. I know Torvi was able to top cut a regional with it. It got top four at a regional on in the hands of Luka Pass. Uh, this this one, uh, the at least the common Flutter Chiyu team was actually developed by um he got a uh, Giovanni or he goes by Polar Bear online and yeah he he's been really good with it. Uh, basically you have Icy one into Fluttermane. Uh, no, Icy one Fluttermane into you know Spax Chiyu. It does a lot of damage. Both the Fluttermane and Chiyu are really 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 invested into bulk. Like, they are super invested into bulk, and, you all, and then you pair that with a bulky Ogre Pond Wellspring, and with Terra Water, it's able to hit all the Terra Waters that are meant to, you know, switch in front of Chi Yu, because you can just Horn Leech them. It also, you know, beats the Terra Fires with Ivy Cudgel, that are also, you know, Terra to beat the uh, Chi Yu Flutter Main. So it actually has amazing offensive synergy, but all the Pokemon are EV to be so, so bulky together, so it actually becomes really hard to get off the field, and you win all the damage trades. I think the team is good, but there still is counterplay to it, and because it's not getting that many results recently, I'm going to put it in B+. I would say, though, like, the last regional is Knoxville. And Luca Pasted, I'm actually going to put this in A tier. I think the offensive pressure out of this is too much. And I do think Specs Chi is good. Yeah, no, no. Th this definitely has its neutral matchups. We just have not had a regional in, in a while. Like, or like, we haven't had a regional in North America or Europe for so long that it kind of just, like, I think I think the results are definitely biased in terms of that, but just like even recently, if you consider Knoxville, like the fact that this did well, I think is a good sign to actually put it in A. So I'm gonna put Flutter Chi Yu in A. The other reason I want to put Flutter Chi Yu in A is I think this actually um refers to the Flutter Chi Yu team with the Tornadus Glamora. And I think that team is really good right now. Like I, I, I absolutely think that team is amazing and definitely worth, uh, definitely worth actually testing. So I think because or like still using now, like it was built like really early on. But I think that team is still just absolutely amazing. It does use the Flutter Chi Yu Ogre Pond Wellspring Core has a Tornadus for extra speed control. Like that team is just absolutely busted. And like if there was any, if if. 
if I were giving advice to new players on what team to pick up for a regional, that's the one. Every time I would say that's the one because it's just so into it, it's I would say it's easy to pilot, but also just has all its good matchups. Like I personally, like I will be straight up going into Vancouver. I don't think I have a good matchup into that. Like the both times I played it at the local, it went to three and it was so, so, so close. So like, I guess if, if like, I get, and like, I know a lot of people are going to Vancouver who also don't feel, don't have their matchups into that. So that might be something that's actually worth looking into. Then the next one is going to be Fire, Water, Grass, HO. Now let's see. This is probably referring to Sword Stance, Heart Flame, you know, Rapid Strike, and Rillaboom. This is something that Wolfie ended up using to win the Charlotte Regional Championships. But I guess the question begs, how good is it now? This the core does struggle into Dragonite, but it is paired with partners that beat Dragonite. I think Fire, Water, Grass in general, I think Ogre Pond, Heart Flame is absolutely amazing. There's few things that can handle it, and especially in the current state of the metagame, you just have to pair this with something that beats a Dragon type, which isn't that hard. Fluttermane's the best partner for these three, uh, like, you know, straight up. That, that's why, that's what Wolfie ended up using. That's what everyone uses. Like, like Urshifu, Rapid Strike, Heart Flame, and uh, Rillaboom lose to, you know, stuff like Raging Bull, lose to Dragonite. Fluttermane's a hard counter to that. So I actually think because of that, and because Fluttermane fits so well onto these cores, and because Heart Flame is so busted, Terrifier Ivy Cudgel has very few switch-ins. Like, even something like Raging Bolt swapping into a Terrifier Ivy Cudgel gets two shot on swapping. Like, that's how powerful the Pokemon is. Ogre Pond Heart Flame clears max HP, max defense in DD. Terra Water Surging Strikes and most of uh, Mystic Water or Shifu cannot do that. So it is stronger than Mystic Water 252 Adamant or Shifu, Terrifier Ivy Cudgel. Like, that's how strong the Pokemon is. It clears stuff like Lando Eye, it clears stuff like Ogre Pond Wellspring, max HP. Even if it has a little bit of defensive investment, it still clears that Pokemon. So that's how strong Ogre Pond Heart Flame is. And I think because the Pokemon is so strong, it's really, really worth using with you know Rillaboom or Shifu and I think it's just really broken I think Heart Flame is super underrespected right now like the Pokemon is just so good like even the follow me set I think is really good like I don't think it has the best matchups overall but it just hits so hard that it doesn't need to have the best matchups it's kind of like in Sinor in 2022 like it lost to Kyogre and Groudon and it still had 80% usage it even lost the Zacian 1v1 and it still had that usage so I think that's kind of the concept that I'm getting out of Ogre Pond Heart Flame now, the next one on this list is going to be the King Gambit teams. These usually run, you know, King Gambit, Gouging Fire. They run Ogre Pond, Wellspring. Sometimes they run Trempow. Sometimes they do actually drop that for Lando I, like James Evans did, to get second place at Knoxville, I believe. Oh, no, what was the regional at Toller won? Toller, Toller won Knoxville, I think. Because um, Justin cut Knoxville, and then Justin lost to Luca Pass, but then Toller beat Luca Pass. Okay, okay. So no Knoxville was actually the one that Toller won. Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that I got that right. But yeah, at that like, I think Gouging Fire, you know, stuff did actually get second place at that regional. I think that Gouging Fire team is really good into everything except that uh, Tornadus Fluttered Shiyu stuff. Or like any Tornadus team that has Ogre Pond Wellspring, I think does cause that, you know, the Howl stuff to have problems because your way of beating Tailwind is just, you know, King Gambit setting up Sword Stance plus Rillaboom. So you do have to be really careful when you go up against those teams. But otherwise, I think the matchup spread is really good. It's good into the Roaring Moon team if you play it properly. It's good into Firewater Grass because, you know, Gouging Fire is a good Dragon type and it has Breaking Swipe. I think there's a lot of positive matchups that you're getting out of the Howl stuff. And I think Howl itself is just such a broken concept that I'm going to put it in S tier. I do think this team is really good right now just going into the next regionals I think if you're if, if you have a lot of experience with the game like if you've day two to regional before at least let's set that as the benchmark and you need a team to use for the next regional this is definitely something I would recommend I wouldn't particularly recommend Firewater Grass because I do think it takes a lot of experience to play this one's a bit easier to pick up and yeah if, if you're going to Vancouver and you're like yo I don't have a team for it I would just recommend picking this up if you need a team for your local next weekend I would also recommend picking this up like this is probably the team to pick up if you're, if you're more of a newer player, this is the one to pick up. I think both of them can easily win the next regional, but yeah, that's kind of just my opinion on it. Then there's Coma O. So at the time that Eric Rios and Alex Gomez used the Coma O team, it was actually, so Scott Ivafucci was the one that came up with the original team, and he was really, really high up on ladder with it, and Gomez and Rios did not have a team for the regional. And they ran into, um, you know, Scott Ivafucci, and they were like, yo, this team actually has really good matchups in the metagame, no one's prepared for it, you're really high ranked, you know, can we get your input on the team? And yeah, he ended up giving his advice, and both Eric Rios and Alex Gomez were able, able to make it into day two with that team, and then eventually at the next regional, um, they were able to make their own adaptations, and Rios was able to cut. So it actually ended up being really good back then. 
but now people are using stuff like golden go i think the thing about the como ting lu team is that people think the team is really boring people think the team isn't very good and because of that people hyper focus on countering it and because people hyper focus on countering it the team itself actually ends up being pretty poor. So I think the reason the team ends up being poor is because people respect it a lot, like too much. I think that's actually kind of the uh, impression that I'm getting out of it. Sometimes side spam cuts a regional because people under respect it because they think it's really easy to be. Here, people actually respect a Como Tinglu so much that it actually not did not end up being the best archetype. So at the current point in the format, I'm going to put it in B, but I think that's just because people just, they prepare so much lines into it. No one wants to lose to Como Tinglu. Like honestly, who would want to lose to Como Tinglu, man? Like no one. So the people just end up preparing their matchups into it. Now, New Snow, this is exactly Tio's team. I think I think this is what that's referring to. And in my opinion, so basically, if you I've I've actually gotten asked this question a lot. Do you have Rain Dance on your Tornadus to beat Articuno? It does not beat Articuno. Sunny Day Torn and Rain Dance Torn do not beat Articuno. And the reason it does not beat Articuno is because one, you lose to the Raging Bolt. The Articuno can still click Blizzard and probably hit like as 50% chance to hit both. Specs Blizzard, that's going to clear the Tornadus probably anyways. And Ninetales can still click Blizzard. So like, it's it's like it's like the turn you're clicking Rain Dance, you're losing your Tornadus anyways. So it's actually not that optimal. And as soon Arcanine beats Tornadus, Raging Bull beats Tornadus. So like the weather setting Tornadus does not actually beat the Snow Team. And I think people don't actually realize that. And that's why people aren't actually picking up on the Snow Team. But the Snow Team is really, 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 really good. Like I actually think it's super good right now. Because you have a Lola Nine Tails that sets up Veil. So, you know, it gives your, the rest of your team more bulk. So in all the balance mirrors, you have extra bulk. On top of that, the rest of your team is just balance. Ogre Pond, Wellspring, you have Hisuian Arcanine, that's Intimidate. You have Raging Bolt, which is really bulky with Assault Vest. So you give you give all these, you know, mons, um, screens. Tornadus doesn't necessarily beat them because this team has so many Tornadus counters. Articuno itself is a solid Pokemon. I think Articuno is probably the weakest link on the team, at least at the moment. I think the other five are really good. But Articuno is still something you have to respect. And the variance advantage that the team gives you in terms of, you know, like Rock Slides, in terms of Blizzards getting the freezes like you're clicking a lot of blizzards every game snow cloak i think the variance is definitely in your favor and i think you have a lot of ways to actually control the game and i think because of that i'm going to put in an a tier i do think people are hyper focused countering their matchups into this but i don't think people actually have their matchups into this figured out so i think because of that i'm going to put it in a like this is so easy to counter if you hyper focus your matchups into it but like this is way way harder and i don't think people actually have it figured out then there's chempao dragonite I will be real. So Chempa Dragonite demands a lot of team preview. Basically, in team preview, you have to counter, otherwise you just lose the game immediately. I think that's I think that's a pretty known fact. But there's so many things that can out the outlast Chempa Dragonite. Terra Ghost and Sinor with Parting Shots, one of the best ones. Like, you know, Fluttermane, Amoongus. Like, there's so many Pokemon that I, you know, like Furrygraph, which is becoming popular. Like, I think there's a lot of counterplay to Trampow Dragonite, but I still think the pressure that it demands is going to put it in B tier. 222 Dozo. Like, I think the thing about 222 Dozo is, like, if you're running Pow D Knight with other partners that are not Dozo, I think it's B tier. But if you're running with Dozo, I think it's B tier just off the fact that Urshifu Dark is on every other team. I think that's actually a really fair rating. But yeah, I do think Pow D Knight, just, just the fact that it demands so much pressure puts it into B. But I would say overall, though, I would not actually, like... I I would not really use this thing. I think like if you're using Pow D Knight, I would never lead it. I would just have it in the back or have it in the mid game. Like I would lead Chen Pao plus like, or at least it's something that uh, Chae Lin ended up uh, inventing at least really early on in Regulation D. But his whole concept was that you can lead Chen Pao plus Iron Hands. You can go for, you know, like attack with Chen Pao or just protect and then go for Volt Switch and then give yourself positioning into Dragonite. Or you can go for something like Drain Punch and like, you know, protect the Chen Pao and then eventually defensively swap around into the Ch Dragonite. And it was really the Volt Switch that allowed him to like chip things and, you know, actually sweep with Chen Pao Dragonite. So I think you'd probably want to use it with a similar concept. Chen Pao AV Rillaboom can do that with like slow U-turn. I think Chen Pao Ensign can even lead and do that. So that's kind of the direction you want to think about. I do think though the Salt Best Dragonite plus Champau and Howl Gouging Fire is absolutely amazing. Like the fact that you can give that thing a Howl boost and its inner focus is so wild. Like it gets the plus one, it has insane bulk, and it just wins games. Like I think that is absolutely amazing. Like that is so, so hard to beat. Like how do you beat that? Like it, it's, it's actually like really hard to counter. And close sheet, it's even scarier because the Dragonite could be banded and you can just lose a mate uh, like immediately. I actually pull my friend Seawolf Mike's like immediately, like that's, 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 that's what name he goes by online on best of one ladder. And his Dragonite was banded and I thought it was a salt best. And after he got a 
power boost, my whole team just got destroyed. So yeah, that definitely is something that could happen. But like either way, I think I think Pau D Knight, like B is pretty fair for it. Actually, okay, the choice band one is B tier, the assault vest one is B plus. I think that's actually a pretty fair rating for it. Psy spam. I think Psy spam is actually under respected. That archetype is solid. There is a lot of ways to beat size spam, though. I think everyone can agree about that. But the size spam players know their lines. Because the thing about size spam is you have to not only deal with, you know, the size spam mode, but you have to deal with Torkoal. You have to deal with the, the potential scar for Shifu. I saw some really innovative things actually at my local. A uh, dude who, uh, Brandon Davis, who actually top cut uh, Portland with size spam, had a really, really unique take on size spam at the next MSS, and he was able to, you know, top cut that MSS. I got the chance to play him. It was such a cool archetype. It had like Iron Moth. They had like Ogre Pond Wellspring. It had Iron Crown. I think there's definitely a lot of variants of size spam. And I think when you're building size spam, you have to be smart about how you build it. Like a size spam version with Rillaboom and Ogre Pond Heart Flame, I think ended up winning one of the online tournaments. So you have to you have to think basically in terms of like how you're actually building the archetype. I think there's some. I, I think you have to be really meticulous about it. It's a hard trick room team, so you do have to be smart about it. But yeah, personally, I think the Rillaboom variants are pretty cool. But yeah, I would I would give it B plus. I think there is still specific counter play and no and a lot of people just try to hard counter size spam i have a really really funny story actually so my friend marcus dion this guy day two's the world championships you know is doing really well then he comes to pittsburgh regionals and has this brilliant idea let's bring size spam to pittsburgh so he brings size spam to pittsburgh and guess what happens to him he pulls a person running rillaboom plus sub heatran gets completely destroyed because he had no counter to it then next round he ends up, I uh, actually don't remember what he pulled, but he beat the guy. That, that's all we need to know. The round after that, he pulls a Rillaboom plus Heatran. Drops the one too, because he has no matchup. I think the one he won was actually another Rillaboom Heatran. He just outplayed it completely. Because he's a good player, of course, right? He day two the World Championships. So he's sitting there one two. Then there were a certain Cana there were a few Canadian players that had a team that was like Amoongus, Iron Hands, Nasty Plot, Goldango. You know, a lot of standard stuff. But they had a Thunderous on their team. And their size spam matchup was Electric Train Thunderous because it can power up the hands, you know, give sleep immunity and everything. So it was a really cool tech. But he pulls that guy, which, which is, who's also in our friend group. He loses, of course, because he had no matchup. So it drops to 1-3. Then the next round, he pulls someone. He pulls the dude's friend who's running the same team. So then he drops to 1-4. And <laughs> we just started laughing. We were like, bro... How you day two worlds and go one for at the regional. So that can definitely happen with size spam, right? You just pull people who just hard counter size spam. Like Electric during Thunders is specifically there to hard counter size spam and never lose to it. And people will do that. So I think because of that, I'm going to put it in B+. Like, I do think the archetype is good enough to be A, but I think the fact that people are prepping too hard into it definitely makes it B+. But I think it's a bit better than Como Tinglu, just because this one's actually a lot more offensive, and offensive teams are harder to counter than defensive teams. So that's kind of my take there. Sand has not been getting results. It's just not. Like, we've not seen Sand top cut a regional. I mean, in Regulation F. It did win a regional in Regulation... Um, it was regulation E, but the thing was that wasn't really a sand team. That was just Tyranitar there to beat Psy Spam, and it was mostly actually focused on taking advantage of Como. I thought that was really, really cool, by the way. But either way, so basically, the thing about sand is, I, I think we can actually come up with a pretty solid answer that it's probably C. There was a good Japanese team using sand, and Aaron seemed to believe in it. I know he was talking about it at the local. He was like, yeah, you know, you have the sand mode, you have Amoongus. He, oh, so basically what Aaron said about the team, I'm pretty sure he said this in his video as well, but this kind of just what I remember what he told us at the local he was like okay Excadrill so this this was it was a terrace it was a terrace seller sash Excadrill he was like basically you can't really sweep with Excadrill in the early game but if you bring it in properly in the end game it just closes out games really easily and it's really really potent in the end game so that's probably how you want to play it and that's realistically the way it should be played so yeah that's kind of my take that I think I think I do really agree with that like Excadrill doesn't really have the power to knock things out especially since it does need focus sash in the format so yeah that's kind of the uh, theory behind it i do think c is pretty fair for it until it gets a result like i have not even seen it like i've not even seen it make top 16 at a regional in this in this format yet so yeah i think it's actually pretty fair to put it in c then there's setup balance so this is combine sylveon you know volcarona and combine raging bolt so like you know quiver dance and all that so it's not all three of these pokemon pair together but it's some sort of combination of two and these kind of teams have been really successful. It was originally developed by, you know, Eric Rios and Alex Gomez, the Volcarona version. Both of them were able to get good results with it, whereas Alex ended up making it all the way to top 16 of that last European regional. And it seemed to be really strong. 
as seem to put in work as seem to have good partners i think at least in my opinion so the team is definitely a i think just based on the results that it's getting recently it has to be a and i don't really think it has that much counterplay it's just that you have to be a good player with it like you have to be playing the team properly and it does require a huge demand for you as a player to figure it out but i think if you are able to figure it out the team is really good and in the and eric rios recently won two mid-season showdowns back to back with it and the week before he actually won two mid-season showdowns back to back with it as well and these are really difficult mid-season showdowns in spain which had almost all the top players out of that out of that region coming so it was a hard mid-season showdown that eric rios was able to win four of them with the team i think that just shows that the team is really good and i know obviously Eric Rios is one of the best players in the world and he's also the one that made the team so the results are definitely inflated because of that but even so I think the team is still good so many people are using it it's all over ladder and this is definitely a team you have to prepare for so yeah I, I think his matchup spread is fine it's, it's just a neutral matchup spread where you have to be the better player then there's Sunroom I guess Sunroom is basically the same as size spam right my only thing is I okay I would say the reason Sunroom is B plus is the same reason Psy Spam is good. Like you can win bad matchups by just spamming Sleep Powder, but it's so hard to get the sleep turns right and everything. And people have so much counterplay to this kind of stuff that it, it does end up becoming a little. Yeah, I think okay. I think hard Psy Spam is better than Sunroom. I personally wouldn't run his and Lilligan. I think the Pokemon is too risky. Like of course you can just randomly win a game if you bring it out at the right time and you know just start going for after you eruptions. But I think it's too risky and personally I wouldn't run it. Like of course you can win the games but i think size spam on its own is definitely better than you know sunroom in general at least that's just kind of like my my general take on it i personally wouldn't run sunroom like i would just if you're running sunroom i would just run torkoal just run torkoal maybe run something like raging bolt and kind of play from there but if you're running sun so this archetype a torkoal venusaur and a walking wake uh, this was used by uh, not Venusaur specifically, but you know Torkoal plus uh, Walking Wake. This was used by Marco Fierro to win a large online tournament, and it was the final invitational of it. And it felt like it was really good for him. He had Torkoal, he had Furry Graph, he had Walking Wake. Walking Wake specifically on these teams is actually designed to beat Incineroar. Like that's kind of the way to do it because a lot of these Sun teams don't like facing Incineroar. Torkoal doesn't like going up against Incineroar. Like Raging Bolt doesn't you know still takes a lot of damage. Like a lot of these Pokemon can't really beat Incineroar. Like, you know especially like Venusaur so if you have especially like goggles and sin you know just like Venusaur can't even touch like I guess other than life or birth power but like even that you're still you know you're still losing the damage trade especially if the instant in that case is like citrus or you miss sleep powder it's like walking wake is a way of getting rid of it in my opinion I'd say this is B plus tier I think there still is a lot of counterplay to it especially since tornadoes do commonly run rain dance like these teams don't necessarily beat tornadoes as easily whereas like you know the other weather team like there are so many tornadoes tornadoes counters here there isn't actually that many so i think because of that i'm gonna leave it in b plus actually i'm gonna leave it in b i think i i i can't really pair with moon balance and pow dina like i think i think i think i think because this this archetype is so volatile like i think there's definitely ways you can lose the game immediately because like are you gonna hyper focus on the trick room mode with eruption or are you gonna hyper focus on the fast mode i and also the fact that this team hasn't really gotten a top 16 at a regional makes me not want to put it in b plus so i think b is actually pretty fair for it then there's tinglu dondozo now, my take on Tinglu Dondozo, I think this team is one of the best teams in the format. It's not really been looked at that much. I mean, I guess it's been looked at a bit, but I don't think it's been as respected as it should be. There are not that many counter to Tinglu Dondozo. Like, even Pokemon like Como and Registeel still get overwhelmed by Tinglu Dondozo if you play it properly. And Gouging Fire is perfect synergy with this. Like, the fact that he can howl up these two physical attackers, and the fact that one of these physical attackers is oblivious, like, you know, in terms of ability, the fact that he has Vessel of Ruin, the fact that he has Yawn in this damage reduction and still ways of boosting damage through Howl. It's just such a busted three mon core. And then Dragonite, oddly enough, is the perfect fourth on that. And it also benefits from Howl. Chen Pao adds to the damage of all the Pokemon because of Sword of Ruin, and any random special attacker in the last slot or something like Ogre Pond Teal Mask just makes the team perfect. So there's like, you know, Pokemon like Golden Go, Teal Mask, Heart Flame, um, Wellspring. Like there's so many Pokemon that fit the last slot. And yeah, I think because of that, this team is just busted. Like I think you you do have to be a good player to make it work. But if you are a good player, I think Ting, like I think Ting Lu to Dozo just goes crazy. Like I was playing against one of my friends using Ting, like I was using Ting Lu Dozo and we were trying to test the Amoongus matchup and I dismantled Amoongus. Like, and it was, it was partially due to taunt Ting Lu, but it was just due to the fact that my Mons had more bulk than the Amoongus team did. And that's a crazy 
crazy feeling because Amoongus teams are meant to have a lot of bulk. So the fact that like Tinglu Dondozo team felt like it had more staying power than the Amoongus team, and the fact that that's the reason I was able to 2 0 it, I think is a really good sign for the archetype. Like, just in general, I think the team is so good. Like, I guess you could miss Sandtomb and stuff, but you don't even need to go for that. Like, you just yawn, spam Ruination, spam Ruination into Wave Crash. Like, Dondozo is a strong Pokemon. Tinglu, like, you know, chunks everything with Ruination. It's like you're actually getting so much value out of the Pokemon. Rocky Helmet's so busted here. I think the team is just so well possessioned right now. It hard counters stuff like Psy Spam if you play it properly. Like, there are so many teams that just completely lose the Tinglu Dondozo. Then there's Tornadus plus Urshifu Rapid Strike plus uh, Lando I. Now, or like, you know, just these kind of archetypes, like Torn Shifu. Now, in light of Torn Shifu, I, at least like my issue with this kind of team, is that Raging Bolt is so, so annoying for it. Like, Raging Bolt kind of just hard counters this kind of stuff, and because Raging Bolt hard counters the main mons, and because a lot of the Raging Bolt partners are good into a lot of these team partners, I think it does make it kind of hard to pilot. You do have to know the archetype to play it properly, but if you do know the archetype, I think you can definitely get a good result with it. I think B plus is really fair for it, because these teams do carry counters to Raging Bolt. Like, Lando Eye is one of the best counters. Fluttermane is definitely one of the better counters. You know, Rillaboom with high horsepower is a good counter. So there's definitely ways to beat Raging Bolt, but again, the Raging Bolt team also has ways to beat these Pokemon, so it kind of just comes down to who plays better, but I do think the Raging Bolt player is definitely at a slight advantage there. Then the next one's Tailwind Psyspam. This team has a really poor matchup into Assault Vest Raging Bolt. That's something that we were able to discover at some of the earlier regionals, and when this team had its success, it's because AV Raging Bolt wasn't that good. Now, AV Raging Bolt isn't entirely a counter to it, like you still can lose the game, but I think, I think overall, at least my take on Tailwind Psy Spam is that I would put it in I would put it in B plus tier. I think the team is still pretty solid. It puts on a lot of offensive pressure. I don't think people are respecting some of the Indeedee combos. Like people are respecting Indeedee into Iron Crown, of course, but I don't think people are respecting Indeedee into Heart Flame. You know, just fake in, into a Helping Hand Terrifier Ivy Cudgel. I think that's something that's definitely really good and worth looking at. So I think because of that, I'm gonna leave this in the B plus tier. I think there are definitely modes. I think Urshifu Rapid Strike Choice Scarf is really well benefited by Indeedee because of the ability to turn off terrain to block fake out and thunderclap so yeah i think because of that this team is still really solid it did you know again it, it has gotten its regional top cut so like but in the hands of toller web as charlotte so yeah i think because of that the team is good but yeah overall i i think this is a relatively fair tier list just based on some of the top teams i don't even know how sand made this list like i personally would just put sand into like a tier lower than 222 dozo but yeah i think all these archetypes are still usable these are you know according to scooty easy the top 20 archetypes in the format so yeah that is something that's definitely worth looking at i might make a video like before this going over these archetypes because i think this is actually a really really good list but yeah that's pretty much it in terms of uh this video um yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below and yeah Hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.